Hello and welcome to another episode of Japanese Snack Reviews. Today we are covering the August 2022 Japan Crate Snacks. So if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link in the, pl uh, in the description below. But basically uh, it is a box of snacks if this is your first uh, episode watching this. It's a bunch of snacks, I've opened the box already and these are the snacks inside that I'm going to eat. So we're going to start off something kind of simple, which is Bisco. Uh, this is apparently a vanilla, uh, like, filled biscuit thing, so that's going to be interesting. Um, the front of the cover, uh, the front of the pack is a little bit terrifying as well, with that just grinning child. Uh, I'm guessing these are meant for, you know, small children. Uh, I'm guessing these are kind of small biscuits too. Yeah, there we go. So, it's a little bit crushed, unfortunately, but as you can see there, there's two biscuits with some vanilla kind of fl um, filling, so I'm going to go take a bite. Okay, I just had to double check the um, little booklet thing. This, so it, it's got a kind of vanilla-y, creamy thing, but it also tastes of lemon. That's really weird. Like, th this tastes like lemon, like, cream filling. I'm going to have another bite. Alright, so just eating another one. Maybe it's the kind of vanilla cream itself, but it's got a weird lemony tang to it. I genuinely feel like I'm losing my mind slightly here. Um, but that is really nice though. I mean, they're, they're fairly standard biscuits. The vanilla isn't like super, super flavorful, but you know, I mean, it's quite nice. It's it's there. I, I like this little pack. I mean, this is a good, like, good amount of biscuit snack to have. You know, it's just the right amount. Yeah, not bad, to be honest. Uh, don't know if I'd go out of my way to buy some, but if I saw some, you know, bisco around and I was in the mood, uh, maybe I'd buy these. Anyway, on to the next snack. Alright, next up is something I've been quite looking forward to, and that is Korokan Candy. Uh, so this is cola flavoured, apparently, so uh, very excited to try that. It's apparently fluffy inside, or has a fluffy and light texture or something, so that's going to be interesting. So there you go, that is what it looks like. It's kind of a light white ball or whatever. I'm going to take a bite. And much like the picture here, uh, it is sort of slightly hollow in the middle. I don't know if there's meant to be cola or something in it. It's very nice though. Um, it's got the consistency of like chewing gum, I guess. It's not chewing gum, it's obviously not. Uh, but yeah, it's got a pretty strong cola flavour. I'm going to have the rest of this. Mm. I just had a second one as well, just to um, really get a taste for it. And yeah, honestly, the the flavour is pretty darn nice. So it's it's pretty much your standard fake cola flavour, as you'll find with a lot of sweets. Especially in Japan. Um, as with like their grape and their strawberry stuff. Their cola flavoured tastes a little different to cola flavoured stuff in the UK and the US. So... It is, it is a little bit, you know, interesting in that. And yeah, honestly, there's quite an aftertaste as well. When you're chewing it, there's a bit of a taste and, you know, it's nice. But like afterwards, after your mouth is clear, you really get like a hit of cola flavour as well. Yeah, overall, these are pretty darn nice, actually. I'd, I'd, I'd maybe buy some of these, actually, because um, you don't get a lot of cola flavoured stuff. Well, apart from like cola bottle sweets or whatever, but these are really cool. Yeah, kudos to them. Pretty darn nice. Alright, on to the next snack. Okay, it is time for some senbei. So these are soy sauce flavoured rice cakes. They're fairly simple, but I kind of, I, I thought I'd show you guys what they are, just in case you've never seen a senbei before. So <clears throat> they are pretty standard. They apparently are bunny senbei, but I'm not I'm not seeing the, the, the bunniness of them. Yeah, they're, they're rice cakes and they're slightly sticky, very slightly. So, I'm going to go take a bite. Hmm, you know, that's pretty darn good, actually. Um, it is a rice cake, so, I mean, don't expect anything, you know, super crazy. But, honestly, the sort of soy sauce glaze thing that's going on on top of it is actually really nice. Um, it's kind of a subtle flavour. It doesn't stay long in the mouth or anything, but that's not bad, actually. I quite enjoy that. Right, well that was fairly basic, let's move on to something a bit more wild. Alright, it's time for some sour paper. And this is grape flavour, grape. So yeah, this is kind of a gummy, kind of uh, 
a, a thin piece of like sugary gummy stuff uh, but also it's very sour as you can imagine so if I can tear into this successfully and pull it out so that is what it looks like it's, kind of, it's very very thin obviously but it is grape flavour I do love me some grape flavour and sour stuff as well I've always been a sucker for sour stuff so I'm going to go take a bite alright that um that was slightly unexpected so it's very strong grape flavour if you've had Japanese grape flavoured like candy before you'll definitely recognise it it's um I really like it it's quite sweet and it's a bit different to like regular grape flavoured stuff um <clears throat> however I wouldn't say I'm getting much of the sourness I took like a decent sized bite and like chewed it for a while but I don't know um it's very, very, very mildly sour at the end, I guess. But honestly, I just call this like grape paper um, or graper. Yeah, um, I mean it. It delivers great. It delivers great on the uh, the flavour and everything. It is really nice. Just I guess don't accept, don't expect much sourness with this because uh, unless my tolerance is like incredibly high, I I think it's just kind of sweet. But it's very nice as well, to be fair. Right, well, on to the next snack. Alright, so, this is kind of a snack, I guess, but I'm just doing it for the toy, really. So this is the Chorus Whistle Candy. Uh, I'll briefly show you guys how a whistle candy works. I did do it uh, a while ago with July's uh, Japan Crate, because that had a whistle candy thing. That was quite fun, but then we'll take a look at the toy, which is the main reason for doing it. So, I'll pull one of these out. So as you can see, they're kind of like thick mints. Um, and I'll take a bite in a second, but I'll show you what the sound is. So you put it between your lips and you blow and it sounds like this. It is incredibly high-pitched, uh, as you can hear, so I imagine many Japanese parents are absolutely sick of hearing this. Anyway, I'm going to take a bite and I'll show you how it works. Hmm, that's actually strawberry flavour. Um, I thought these were all Ramune or mint flavour, but no, this is this is quite nice strawberry, actually. Um, but anyway, as you can see inside, there's a bit of a hollow, so sort of like when the wind passes through the hole, it gets trapped in there, and when it comes out, then it makes a kind of whistly sound. It's quite smart. Actually, anyway, I'm going to finish this off now. And now it's time for the toy. Amoria Ham, I think. Uh, I don't know what's going to be in here. Hopefully it's not too hard to assemble. It's Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wait, hang on. Okay, so I think it is just that. Yo, okay, cool. So it's like an ultimate muscle kind of thing. Uh, let me try and get a better view of this. Alright, so um, it's hard to kind of tell. It looks like a big buff, uh, like lizard dude, I guess, with a like massive drill on his head. I don't know if there's lots to collect or anything. This is very like nostalgic, so personally I never owned many of these. But as a kid growing up I did see them a lot. And yeah, it's just like a, you know, a single sort of moulded piece of plastic. I mean, the detailing is pretty decent. You know, it's, it's not amazing, obviously. I can't really see his face very well. He kind of looks like buff Godzilla, basically, or if Godzilla and King Kong had a child. But yeah, that's really nice. That That's just, like, super cool to have. You know, it's just a, a curious little thing. I'll put it on a shelf somewhere. But yeah, that's really nice. Right, on to the next snack. All right, it is time for some aerial rich cheddar cheese. Um, potato chip kind of snack things. Uh, they're apparently very crispy. Uh, and they're called rich cheese on the uh, little cheat sheet, but it does say cheddar cheese in front. Uh, hang on, BRB. All right, they're open, and good lord, that is a strong cheese smell. So this is them inside. I shall grab one. Ooh. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, there's kind of like layered, kind of... It's kind of a cone snack kind of thing, but it's it's layered. Right, cool. I'm going to go have a taste. 
Okay, these are really nice. Actually, I just had one and it's really interesting. So the layers, I'm guessing the four in the front says there's four layers in each of these maybe. It's really unique actually. Um, you kind of bite into it and then like, yeah, you, you just feel the different flavors. They're quite thin and stuff, um, as you'd expect, obviously. And yeah, there's a really strong cheese taste. I'm gonna have another one. Okay, these are really addictive. Um, so they've got the Japanese cheese taste. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit weird, but Japanese cheese flavored snacks tend to have a bit of a unique thing. It's a little bit more mild in terms of the cheesiness and a little bit sweet. Not not very sweet, but like an underlying that's a lot sweeter than your usual cheddar cheese like American or UK snacks. But these are really interesting. Um, yeah, the texture really does add something. They're really crunchy. They're really satisfying as well. And the cheese, personally, I think the cheese is just right. It's not overpowering or anything, but you definitely get a strong cheese flavor as well, but it doesn't linger too long, which is cool. These are really nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this down on my Japanese snack list of things I really enjoyed, because uh, keep an eye out for Aero, uh, Ariel, sorry, Ariel cheese snacks in the future. These are really nice. Right, on to the next snack. It's time for Nata de Coco peach flavor. So I still don't know what nata de coco is uh let me know in the comment section below if you do they kind of feel like gummy cubes and apparently there's a rare chance of finding one with a smiley face on it um so i guess let's see what pulls we get uh so we have one here uh, i don't think that has a smiley face uh ooh, wait hang on no don't think that's a smiley face Okay, I just checked off camera just to make sure that I uh, wasn't missing it. No, okay, there's no smiley face on this, but it does smell very peachy. And it's very, it's a jelly cube, basically. So I'm going to take a bite. Hmm, okay. That was quite interesting. It's got a very interesting texture. So this is nata de coco, whatever that is. But yeah, it's very tough. It's very tough jelly, if that makes sense. Uh, it's a little bit deceptive, actually. It does feel like it's very soft, um, like a Turkish delight, but it's harder. It's definitely, um, yeah, a lot firmer. I'm gonna have the other piece. Hmm, okay, it, it's very nice. I do love the texture. However, I will say the peach flavor isn't that strong. At least I'm not picking up on it, so I'm gonna have another one just to check. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I really like the texture. I, I I quite like firm jelly stuff, if that makes sense. Sort of, it's it's got quite a bit of a chew. You know, it takes a while. However, I don't know. I'm really not picking up much on the peach flavour. There's definitely a flavour there, but it's so subtle that it's hard to pick up on. It just tastes sweet, like generally sweet. It's also kind of covered in some kind of like powdery thing, but that's not peach flavour either. Um, I don't know. Maybe my palette is a little bit off or something but yeah I'm not picking up a massive amount of peach flavor but I am really digging whatever these are so I mean a win for that but not for the flavor <laughs> I guess all uh, right on to the next snack all right it is time for some power water so this is kind of a fruit uh, drink I think so interesting we've got a little mascot there Quick look at the uh, bottle. That is the beautiful shot of Kyoto and stuff. I do like these kind of bottles. I've had them once or twice before. They're uh, quite interesting. So let's crack this open. I'm assuming it's going to be red coloured, but I could be wrong. Uh, so I've got my trusty glass here. Uh, oh, I was incorrect. It's actually just kind of clear and... Uh, Okay, not necessarily clear. It's actually a little bit misty, but I'm going to take a quick sniff. Hmm, okay, that kind of smells a bit like lemonade, kind of. As in, like, not Ramune, but actual lemonade. So that's quite interesting. Right, I'm going to go give it a sip. That's quite interesting, actually. So, it does... It does taste quite a bit of Western lemonade. So Ramune and lemonade are generally quite different, but... Yeah, that is very similar to lemonade, but it's got like, 
it's got a hint of something else. I don't think it's strawberry, but it's something along the lines of it. It's a bit fruity, but it's hard to put your finger on it. Um, it doesn't help as well that it is just called power water. There's no particular flavour to it or anything. It's really nice, but it's hard to describe exactly what it is. It is just fruity lemonade, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really digging that. That is really nice, actually. Yeah, not not bad. And um, you get a decent amount in the can as well. So yeah, definitely quite a nice one. Right, on to the last item of this episode, and that is the DIY kit. Alright, it is time for the DIY Jellyfish Aquarium. Uh, so, I've had a look, and the instructions for this are pretty wild. So, I'm going to try my best to do it. There's a lot of steps. Um, I'm probably not going to film the process of it, because it's going to take a while. There's a lot of filling trays in uh, and whatnot. But I will show you guys what it looks like inside. Um, lots of, from what I can tell, lots of powder. There's spoons, there's lots of stuff. There's lots of snapping trays and things like that. So, uh, ah, there we are, and there's some more powder. So. I'm going to go ahead and try and follow the instructions as best I can. Um, and then I'll be back with, hopefully, the uh, finished product. They'll look like jellyfish, maybe. Or they won't. Let's see how it goes. Okay, that was not a very pleasant experience. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Uh, so, I'll give a very brief breakdown. So, the way these are made is you poured some kind of orange uh, powder into these things here and then you put some water in and it kind of turns them into jelly. Then you kind of put water up to a fill line and this turns this liquid into another kind of jelly. And then you meant to like pour that onto the spoon and then get one of those out to put in it. And they end up like little fried egg kind of looking things like that there. Only uh, issue is that that, that is fine, that mixes and pours okay, but getting these out of the moulds uh, is impossible. You can't get them to keep their shape because they're just too sticky. Uh, also, powder goes everywhere and the way they are meant to pour water is using this. Now, as you can see, this is absolutely tiny. Trying to fill this up just to the top and not overflow it is impossible. Uh, and yeah, there's powder all over my table, which isn't the best. Anyway, it does say to leave these for three minutes, and we do kind of have jellyfish here, as you can kind of see. Um, as I said, they do look more like fried eggs, I guess, but um, I'm going to leave them just another... Actually, no, no, it says three minutes, so I'm going to give it a go. And am going to try... There we go, so that is... A jellyfish, uh, as best as I could make it. Now, possibly it might be me, you know, using ham hands, just like not very, uh, not very careful with it. But I'm gonna go eat this jellyfish. Hmm. Um. Okay. Well, if there's one word that comes to mind, <laughs> it's um, slimy. Which I mean, it makes sense. I guess it is a jellyfish. Jellyfish are, by design, very slimy. Um, however, there's not a great amount of taste either, to be honest. I'm getting a little bit of, like, pineapple, I think it is. Which I'm guessing is what, uh, you know, the orange thing is, maybe. Um, but, like, the jelly thing in here just doesn't... It doesn't taste of a lot. Maybe... Maybe pineapple as well. I don't know. Maybe it's that that's pineapple and that's orange, maybe. I don't know. Um, but it's got a weird consistency. It's very watery um, as well, which is unfortunate. So, I don't know. Maybe I got the levels wrong a little bit, but I did fill that almost exactly to the fill line and everything. So, I don't know. Um, having had a history of trying out these DIY uh, you know, kits before, it's kind of what I expected. It... Kind of tastes passingly okay. It, it's kind of fun, I guess, for kids. Personally, I think it's a lot of work for 
not a great payoff. Uh, and anyway, <laughs> it's time to end the video now on such a happy note. Thank you guys very much for watching. I have I have enjoyed a lot of the snacks from the Japan Crate 2020 uh, August 2022. I mean, it's a shame this is a little bit of a downer, but hey, DIY kits are very very hit and miss, so it's kind of to be expected. Um, by the time you're seeing this, my September 2022 Japan Crate video will already be up for the unboxing. That is. Um, and that's just because that arrived early and I've been very busy in August, so it's only been now that I've really had time to film this. I'm going to go eat this other jellyfish. Okay, you know what? The second one was better. I think maybe I let it sit a bit longer, or maybe I got more of this jelly, but that was actually quite juicy. That was weird. Maybe I didn't get enough of that jelly in the first one, but... Yeah, I definitely got a hit of some kind of like tropical fruit kind of thing. Maybe, as I say, pineapple or orange, one of the two. But that wasn't bad, actually. Um, still not really worth all of the effort to go through, to be honest. But I'll give it kudos. It wasn't horrible. It was actually quite nice. Um, so there we are. I, I retract my previous statement. It's not a waste of time. It's just very arduous for a decent payoff. Uh, anyway... As I said, uh, the September 2022 box uh, review thing will be coming out for the snacks in the box, the Japanese snack reviews episode. Probably be near the end of September or something, or, you know, mid-September, we'll see. But I will keep making these for every month I get Japan Crate, which will be for the foreseeable future. So that about wraps it up, really. Thank you guys very much for watching. If there is a snack you'd like me to, you'd like to see me uh, review from the September 2022 crate, let me know in the comments below, and I'll make sure to focus on and include that one in the video. Uh, but that about wraps it up. So until next time, goodbye.